Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode. And we're fortunate enough to get the most iconic real worlder in the history of real world on our show today. Flora, how are we doing? Hi, hi everybody. It's me. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It's finally me. I'm sure you guys haven't seen me in a million years, but here I am. I'm alive and kicking. Did the intro suffice? Yes. Perfect. Perfect. We had to make sure we got off on the right foot here. <laughs> yes, yes. But I'm so glad to have you. Um, obviously, it's been a while since I'm sure a lot of people have heard from you. What have you uh, kind of been up to, just the gist, recent years? Well, the gist of recent years. In the last, let's see, in the last six years, my husband passed away. He had an accident and he passed away my daughter's dad. Um, and I sold my business. I am retired. Oh, congratulations. Yes. So I am officially retired. My best friend said that in order to be a real person in the real world, when I say real world, I mean real world, I, you have to retire by the time you're 50. So I, I am retired. I'm not going to tell you how old I am, but I am retired. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we, we don't need ages on this show. <laughs> Was it always in your intention to kind of fade to black once the uh, entertainment thing got wrapped up with? Did it organically happen or did you step away from the limelight for a particular reason? Well, I um, no, no, you know, I'm, I'm not an actor. You know, what, what am I going to do? Chase the real world? Chase, chase what am I, what am I going to do? I'm going to be 40, 50 years old and, and run around climbing monkey bars, swinging off trees and, and, and swimming for my life to get $10,000? Nah, that's not my thing. I'm a businesswoman. Everybody mm -hmm. knows me from the real world as Flora wanted to start a business. Nobody listened to me. They would have been millionaires by now. But, um, you know, I, I had my own business. I had my own business for five years since my husband passed away i sold it and i'm happily financially happily retired like when i say happily i'm very happily retired yeah yeah because I, I get to travel around the world with my daughter and um you know before that i i ran a publishing company with my best friend so i was somewhat i guess in the limelight with um you know a magazine uh, socialite magazine we did great fashion shows we've done you know great articles photo shoots i've been you know traveling with that magazine and so i guess you could say kind of been in the limelight but in the back end of the limelight yeah because i know like a big thing once uh, real world seasons are wrapped up the cast members most typically usually uh try to soak up those 15 minutes in la that seems to be like the popular thing to do that was never the it case you right well it was i did one challenge in cabo uh, i'm i've seen clips and, and that was when the big hurricane and we did the toga parties i'm sure everybody's seen crazy clips on that um so we did that um i did that and i think that was the end of my uh 15 minutes of fame <laughs> uh, so i mean i'm not i'm not the biggest athletic person in the world i am super hot super fit but i'm not going to compete against these I mean, have you seen some of these kids? I mean, when I say kids, they're my age. They're like monsters. <laughs> so so do you happen to like, are you like in tuned in that sense? Like, do you get info rolling in like about like uh, challenges that go on now? Because they do like, like you said, with like the age thing, like they have a all-stars thing and people that you were on the shows around the same time are still doing them. As crazy as that is to imagine. Look, I'll be honest with you. Nobody invites me. I, I I don't know. Maybe I'm just too great, too fabulous, and maybe they're all scared happens, of my happens my. Happens to the best of us. <laughs> I mean, I you know, listen. I I think that the reason they don't invite me, I'd like to say, is because I'm too fabulous for them. Can okay. they all kick my ass? Can they all kick my ass? Absolutely. But can I kick their ass this way? That's the problem. I could probably kick their ass this way. Physically, probably not. Mentally, absolutely. Yeah, people like the fans, um, when I said you were going to be joining me, my uh, my viewers and listeners wanted me to ask you about this because that one challenge season that you did, 
they kind of like didn't really showcase you, you know, like they didn't really fit you into the equation, so to speak, with um, what was portrayed. Um, do you do you have any like recollection or clue as to why that would be? Because fans have like their theories or whatever. They uh, speculated uh, something about the 10 year reunion. Um, I, I did the 10 year reunion. Did I do? I did a reunion. Some t- I don't remember. There was a reunion in Vegas. I did that one. Oh, Lord, it was many centuries ago. That's when dinosaurs roamed the world. Um, I don't, why didn't, you know, I think because I didn't take my clothes off, I didn't show my tits, I didn't show my ass, I didn't make out with any cast members, I I didn't hump anybody, I didn't dump anybody. Maybe that's why. Reality, you know what reality TV is? Reality TV is if you want fame, you have to do something crazy. Mm-hmm. Period. That's when you get your airtime, and everybody knows this. Back in the days, we just did, we just did what we did uh, when our season was. It wasn't premeditated anything. Almost not. Uh, you know, some of it was premeditated, I guess, but most of the stuff was not premeditated. And we did what we did, and our personalities really shined. Now we have this thing. Take one. Mm, can you say that again? Can you say that again? Well, that didn't come out. Can you can you blink your eye? It's almost like scripted. And, and, and if it doesn't work out the way that the directors, producers, and so forth want, we got to retake it again. And it's understandable because, you know, people are getting smarter. You know, television is getting uh, much more uh, intense and a lot more competition. Back when I was on The Real World, there was no competition. It was us against the world. We were like the future. And now there's a hundred of us in the future. There's the Kardashians. There's the dancing mom, dancing queens, singing mom, singing queens. I mean, you know, sport. you're competing. Exactly. You're competing against the best of the best. So you got to make sure you are the best of the best. The genre has evolved so much from, let's just say, real world Miami to essentially what reality tv is now you know like you guys had real conversations and we're just people from different walks of life coming together like you guys were trying to create a business we like now we're just getting people who are like either established like let's just say models or like have lives already they're all just going there just pretty much for the paycheck essentially and i'll just you know fake it to make it now which sucks which i am hoping that somewhere in the very near future and there's some things in the near future where reality tv is going to come back as reality tv real reality tv where you roll out of bed and you're not in full makeup in a negligee or or in a like sexy teddy with high heels on who sleeps with makeup and high heels i mean i don't i sleep in boxer shorts and a big t-shirt um so, you know, back then, reality TV was the bomb. You never saw anybody with makeup. You, you, you saw, you know, I remember looking back into uh, some of the episodes. I'm laying on this couch at all times with big T-shirt, shorts, watching TV. My hair is all over the place. Or I roll out of bed coming from a night of working at a club four in the morning. I, my hair looks like I've been electrocuted. Who sees that? Is there any reality show? that somebody wakes up looking like that, even from a night of partying. Absolutely not. And I hope that, you know, someday in the near future, you know, reality TV will bring it a little bit down and make it a little bit more reality TV because we're seeing the most beautiful people, the most beautiful makeup, the most beautiful outfits. That's not how we walk around the house in. Like, we don't. I walk in, like, old grandma slippers. (laughs) I'm with you on that. So I take it you don't uh, watch too much reality television then? Um, you know what? I do watch. I like that that boat show um, be, uh, Below Deck. I, I oh. like that because I, I want to be on that boat. I want to be the guest star on that boat. I want to get on and I want to I want to I want people to, to tell me how fabulous I am just because I'm paying them. <laughs> Hey, who knows? Maybe if like certain uh, social medias existed back when you were on your season, you might have got your own spinoff or something like that. Maybe, maybe. I, because I think I was beyond the best of them all. I mean, I was funny. I am funny. I wasn't was funny. I am pretty funny. And it's not because I sit there and I write my own little 
skits and it's just my personality and I think that they did such a good job back in the days picking the perfect cast members that are funny that are stupidly funny that are crazy that are you know I, just back then was just a big different you know monster did you watch yourself on your season on the real no. world oh I knew it I want to know <laughs> I knew I, it who watches themselves that's I don't watch them. That's a consistent no. answer. That's a consistent answer by cast members. Usually it's weird my to watch. My daughter back. does. No, I can't watch myself. I'm embarrassed. <laughs> it's like, you know what it is? It's like doing a retake. So just like now they say, do it again. I could only say a joke once that I didn't write, which I don't write jokes. Like I could make a joke and, and, it's natural, but if you tell me to say it again, it's going to look stupid, right? It's going to be like, you know, I'm going to have to fake smile or, eh, you know, do the stupid, you know, faces. And But when you say it originally, it comes out naturally, and it's it, that's, that's the way it is. And it's hard to watch yourself because you kind of feel awkward that you did that or said that, and you're like, what the fudge did I do? <laughs> yeah. My daughter so, watches me all the time. She she YouTubes it and she she's really funny. She's like, "Ma, I can't believe you did that. Are you crazy?" <laughs> well, a lot of people enjoyed you on that show. So my question is, what were you up to prior to going on to Real World Miami, and maybe what led you to uh, getting onto the show? I usually ask my guests their casting story slash process, if you will. So if you could kind of walk me through the uh, oh. domino effect. Lord almighty, I don't know. It might be, well, since I'm already old enough and I'm a mom and I'm a mature girl, maybe uh, this process might help the others. So, um, the honest to God truth, I was a really big, stupid mess. And I knew if I did not get out of Boston, I would not be in a good position, in a good place, on a good straight road. Mm -hmm. And, you know, most everyone who watches this is old enough to understand what I'm saying. I was I was a bartender. I went to school. Um, I also had another job. I was holding shitloads of jobs. And I was, um, you know, bartending, which was taking the most priority at that time, you know, um, partying and just just not being a good girl. And you don't have to be a good girl. You have to have a brain. If you want to be a bad girl, you need to know when to slow down, when to stop. And my personality is of I don't slow down and I don't stop until I crash. And it, I knew it. And the good thing that I have is that I'm able to stop. And I can see that I'm going down the wrong path. And unfortunately, not too many people um, in our society, especially young kids, I, I see it with my kid, unfortunately, somewhat she has a personality of myself. Um, she does not know when to stop or how to stop or how to slow down. And I did. And I knew that I think like, this is weird. God brought these real world, Bionam and Murray and, and, you know, to my, like, to my face and said, take this, this is your road. You go right or you go left, you choose. And I was able to choose to get the hell out of uh, my routine of, of stupidity. The, the, down, the, the down spiral of my, of my life, I was able to choose the right path. And that took me away from just doing, just not being smart, screwing up in school and college, uh, partying too much, hanging out too much, sleeping till four o'clock in the afternoon, going back to work, skipping class, just the, the, the shit that a lot of kids and a lot of teenagers and young adults uh, can't catch themselves and get out of. So that was my path. And um, the real world saved me. I never really auditioned for them. What happened was it was the weirdest thing. I was bartending. And everybody knows the story. I was bartending and they came in to the bar I was working at. Back in the days, it was M80. And everybody who watches knows the famous M80 club um, in Boston, in Massachusetts. Um, they came in and I guess they were 
done casting and they were just hanging out partying because it was the best, most famous club. And um, they must have been sitting in the section where my bar was. And I was nuts. When I was telling you I was not well in the head back then, I mean, we're talking spinning spinning bottles, drinking, getting up on the bar, just being complete loony bins. And they came up to my manager uh, and they asked him, who's that nut, nut job? And, I, and he told him, he said, listen, these people want to talk to you tomorrow. So, of course, I go visit them. And I'm and I go. They were cast casting or last casting in a hotel. I think it was a hotel. This is so long ago. And I all can I use the word fucked up? Yeah, you're good. Cursing. You <laughs> <laughs> so I was so fucked up from the night before. I came in completely a big mess, like a hot mess. I came in and I see a line of thousands and thousands of kids of course here's flora miss uh popularity and miss big thing like her shit don't sting i said i ain't standing in this line are you guys nuts you call me here you want me to stand in front of all these people and wait for my turn can you close that door just close it and um thank you um so and and so i came in um and i said i'm leaving either they get me in front of the camera or they want to talk to me they do it now or never so they did because they said flora is a crazy so they got me in and they talked to me for a split second and then history was made you won them over with your infectious personality i take it i won them over because i said i don't really give a shit i don't care to be here why am i here i noticed that too it's a repeated pattern i see it's like the ones that don't take the process seriously are the ones that end up getting picked Oh, you see a lot. I see. I don't even talk how everybody got onto their, how they got onto their uh, uh, show. But that's how I. I said I don't care. And then they said, "Can we fly you to?" Work? I said, "No, I'm busy." Can we do this? No, I'm busy. Can we follow you? No, go away. And then I said, um, "No, you know what? I think this is if if God is putting these people in front of me so many times and they haven't gone away." I better take the right the right road rather than the left road. <laughs> that must have been a culture shock then for you to kind of have uh, to go from one extreme to the next. You know, normal life to having a bunch of cameras pretty much documenting your every move. At first, probably, I'm sure everybody says at first it was the first few days because it was kind of awkward, blah, blah, blah. And then you kind of don't care. You kind of don't care. I, certain points we got annoyed and we ran away i know i did i had a car there so i had my jeep really there. oh yeah how I, did how did you pull that off were you from you were from no you weren't from my i, I think i had somebody ship my car to me i shipped my car to me wow or somebody drove it to me yeah i, I don't That's... remember but i know i had my wrangler there um and i said I'm out. When I wanted to go out, there's no way that they're going to stop me. So I would escape many times. I mean, they tried and, and stuff, but you know, how did that go over only with so you? much? It didn't. It was always like we, back then it was beeper time. Ah, beep, 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 beep. Flora, where are you? What is your ETA? What is your location? Send us your location. I said, I don't have a location. You have a location. Where are you? You just left the house. I mean, it, they, they didn't like it. They, of course, they're doing, it's business. Back then, you know, we're thinking we're cool kids on TV. And they're thinking we're cool crew and we got to get the shot because, you know, this is what pays our salary. So, you know, we were the nasty rebels and they were the, the working people that made our living. We just hung around and, and did things that we wanted to do. We didn't care for anybody back then. Yeah, were the were there tight curfews there? Any like restrictions? No, you got? there weren't. No, it usually the more changed. The merrier. Over time. It changed really? over time. Yeah, they got really strict. Now I know they one they color the alcohol now, so they know how much is being taken out. And I think they had a uh, they had a second New Orleans season to where, and I'm sure you could probably imagine things don't get started in New Orleans at clubs until two a.m. They had them at right. like a uh, a twelve p.m. curfew. Or a 12 a.m. curfew, my bad. Which well, because is... the crew doesn't want to stay out with them. Yeah, exactly. That's why. I mean, the crew, I mean, what crew 
they don't pay them enough anymore uh, to to stay out all night. We had crew members, you know, sometimes we'd go out to clubs and, and these poor crew members, they would be with us. They're like, hey, guys, how much longer are you going to be here? Listen, why don't you just go get your five minutes of shots and just go, go, go. So, I mean, they don't pay them enough anymore that they need to put themselves in a situation where they're up till four or five o'clock. We're partying, they're working, you know? So I don't, I don't blame them. And like I said, things have changed before we were real people. Now, if you put a curfew on, on a 18, 19 and 20 year old, this is not real world anymore. This is bullshit world. Yeah. (laughs) How often do you think back or reminisce back to your time in Miami? Like, obviously you've moved on, you've built a life for yourself. How often, besides like this present moment with us talking about this, do you ever just think back to those times? I always think back to those times. I love those times. I wouldn't change those times for anything in the world. Nothing, anything, anything. I don't regret doing anything. What I did is what I did then. What I said is what I said then. Would I say these things now at my age, at my time with a child and family and business and no business? Probably not because I have... My brain has developed from a punk ass to a, you know, to, to a person like a grown up. So I, um, I, I don't regret, you know, some people, some people say, oh, I regret this. Oh, I regret that. I regret this. I don't regret anything like absolutely anything. I I don't remember. I must've said and hurt a lot of people there, but that was then. That is it. It was then. Would I hurt these people like this now? Absolutely not. If they called me a bitch or uh, the C word, which I would say, but I don't even like to use that stupid word, um, or like a racist or this, I'd probably, you know, get into a fight with them or call them names here. Here, it's your opinion. That's fine. If you think I'm a bitch, I probably am a bitch. You know, it's your opinion. I'm a bitch. I'm a bitch. You know, back then, I don't regret anything. And I've, I've spoken to several of my friends. One of my dearest, dearest, dearest friends from the real world is, uh, Beth, Beth S. So I've heard (laughs) my, uh, who used to be the two headed monster on some issues, you know, on some things we used to do when we were, we were called the two headed monster, but, um, you know, there's people that say they regret stuff. Uh, you know, I've seen some of her shows, uh, just clips of it. And, um, I only watched hers because she's my friend and I care about her. And, and people are like, I regret this. I regret this. I don't regret shit. I said what I said. I was what X amount of age there. And now I'm X amount of age. Now screw you. You don't, you're going to come at me and talk to me what I said 30 years ago. Suck my dick. (laughs) I mean, sorry. I, I, I excuse (laughs) you. You're fine. (laughs) How how did yours and Beth's friendship kind of start? She is an amazing, amazing person. She's super cool. Uh, I we did we did a photo shoot, and I still have this shoot uh, where we're all on like scaffolds, and we, you know what? To be honest with you, I don't remember. I do remember. We did Playboy. I was going to just, yes, that was the thing. I know you wanted to open that up, weren't you? I, Beth is a genius in, in putting things together. Like when I say genius, this girl is an amazing, amazing, besides an amazing person, she's brilliant in the things that she could put together. And, and she put together a reality uh, a playboy, um, kind of real world, to the girls of the real world, something like that. And I think that's how we became friends. And I just have a good connection with her. She's honest to me. I'm not going to say, you know, she has no reason to lie to me. We're grownups. She has an amazing family. I love her two kids and her husband is amazing. Um, And so we just stayed friends. We worked on a few projects and we're working right now on fingers crossed on a really, really, hopefully it's going to be real um, uh, on a project, um, and she's just a good person. I see her off, you know, as often as I can when I get out to LA and we talk a lot. Um, and 
that's how we became friends. I know a lot of people don't like her, and I just think that it's the stupidest reasons. Like, she told me a couple of things. Like, what the hell? This is her opinion. I mean, fuck off. You know, let the person speak their mind. I, last time I saw we were in, the, in America, not in Taliban, where you don't have an opinion or... You know, so I will always go to bat for her. I will kick ass for her because she I believe that she would do the same for me. It does seem like she is a little misunderstood on these shows. I know you mentioned you don't really keep up or watch too much of it, but I'm sure from uh, being filled in from her or just seeing uh, clips that maybe she's shown you, you could probably put two and two together and theorize how misunderstood she is on these shows. I think the reason she's misunderstood is because, like I said, what happened 20, 30 years ago, leave it there. It's your children. Now you're grownups with kids. Most of us have kids, grandkids. I mean, I don't, thank God. I hope not because uh, I'd kill my daughter. Hey, there's still time. Um, <laughs> oh, shit. Don't even say that. But, um, you know, there is, um, she's, I, I think that these people that are misunderstanding her, they want more of that 15 minutes of fame. She's done. She has a family. She has a beautiful home. Like, she doesn't give a shit. Like, she really doesn't give a shit what these people think. And they just want to keep bringing old shit up. And, and, and I think, and she's honest. What you see is what you get with Beth. Listen, I'll play devil's advocate here. I think there may be a tad bit of jealousy going on there. I mean, you 100%. know. 100%. I, I didn't want to say that. Her, but I, I, I know that she is a hustler from what I could see. Mm -hmm. And she's a go-getter. Yes. So. Good for her for uh, building something. And if people are uh, taking issue to that, then that's, I guess, their own insecurities. So, I agree. A hundred percent. Love. That was perfectly said. Perfectly. What about you? Did you feel misunderstood by maybe some of your roommates on uh, Miami? Maybe that's what led no. to any conflict. No? None of that? No. They can't misunderstand me. With me, it's straightforward. I'm a straight shooter. I'll tell you. Unfortunately, I don't have a filter, as you've noticed in the last few minutes. You know, suck my dick is probably not appropriate for people to, to hear a young lady. I'm not so young, but a woman say, you know, um, I'm a straight shooter. I don't think anybody misunderstood me. What you saw is 100% what I am. Did I have Lewis? Did I have Mitchell? Did I have... Yes, 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 yes. There is no misunderstanding. What you saw is what? Did I want to go climb in the window? Yes. Did I premeditate it? No, I just got back from partying. Of course, I didn't premeditate sitting there. And what you see is what you get. What I said is what I said. At that moment, that's how I felt. And I don't excuse myself and I don't want anybody to say, maybe she meant something else. No, I meant exactly what I said at that moment. Yeah, and the whole premise of your guys' season was to kind of start that business, right? Like you all were yes, supposed to come yes. together. What what did you what was your vision for what you guys or for what you wanted you guys to do? I wanted to start <clears throat> some sort of like a cool cafe. Uh, on, no. I I don't remember I, I wanted to start like back then there was not too much um on Washington there's not too much now there's i mean everything has changed it's like a whole new world out there every time i go i, I don't even live in Miami i live you know where where grown ups live with children <laughs> um but when i do go out and and behave like not a grown up and, and like a punk ass with my friends, I um, go to South Beach and it's different. And now there's so many cafes and very similar to back in the days what I wanted to open. <clears throat> now I'm thinking they gave us $50,000. Do you know what 50 grand buys you right now? Absolutely nothing. It buys you a half a tire on your car. Was that what was that for? It's for the to make something happen. They gave you guys on. Yeah, the they show gave itself? you. They give you. Uh, they gave us. They didn't give us, but they gave us in verbiage uh, $50,000 to start a business. And, uh, it, uh, you know, I don't even remember what the whole thing was, um, but it was 50 grand to start a business. And I wanted to start what's the easiest thing is, is a bar, not like a alcohol bar, but like a cafe, like a, you know, a uh, just cool, maybe with just something different but it had to do with like snacks and you know coffee pastries just like a fucking cafe man the easiest thing to do you work till two o'clock and you call it a day from six to two and you're done bagels you know just stupid shit like that of course 
nobody wanted to do this. Like, you know, since then, I remember I'm always a business person, you know, um, for me, business, this is what, what makes my, my life complete. I have to do business. I'm retired and I'm losing my mind. I'm, I'm doing business. I do real estate. You know, I, I buy houses and I renovate them. I rent them. I have Airbnbs. I can't sit still. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm very business driven and, and it shows from then to now, like, who can say that they took a business in five years, they were able to sell it and retire, right? Okay. I want to bring me another real worlder. And I'm telling you, I'm not going around saying, oh, I'm rich, I'm rich. I'm not saying that at all. I am very comfortable where I can travel around the world three times a year. Figure that one. You know, and it's not because, you know, my husband passed away and left me millions of dollars because for everybody to know, I don't think that Russian, uh, Ukrainian, let me not use the word Russian right now because somebody's going to come out and pop me. But um, my husband, also Ukrainian, um, uh, Ukrainian Jewish, uh, never believed in um, life insurance because, you know, back in the days, the old school men think that the wives are going to pop them if they have life insurance. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not like my husband died and had life insurance and so you know i did this and, and i made it and in five years i had no choice i had a 10 year old daughter back then she was 10 when her dad passed away and you know i had nothing it was either do or die and i needed to do because i'm used to living a certain way and i wasn't planning on living in a one-bedroom apartment and collecting unemployment because that was not an option for me so I did what I had to do and, and that's how I was when I, on the real world, nothing was going to stop me. I was either, it was do or die for me then and it's do or die for me now and it, it will be do or die for me in the future. Listen, and I mean, it's hard to hate on that. I mean, you're clearly a go-getter in your own right. So I just laughed because I was watching it um, the other day. It was the episode of when you guys were having the beating with the one business guy in your guy's living room. Landon's here. And then okay. you, you, you I, I think so. You went and left the room and you're like, oh, you, you guys uh, do what you want. And then you went on the phone <laughs> and the entire house gets into a, a stir over it. Like you just had everybody so bothered for some reason. You did it like effortless. It was effortless. Because it was real. Because I could yeah. give two shits. It's my way or no way. If I'm going to show you how to run a business, if I'm going to help you create a business, it's going to be my way because I don't trust any of you to do it because none of you make me feel like you know what you're going to do. And obviously it showed because we didn't open a business and <laughs> there was nothing happened and we never got the money. And, and I believe that Bjorn and Murray, um, uh, MTV real world, they knew that this wasn't going to happen. If they were going to give me the reins to do it, it would happen. It would have happened because there was no choice for me. Yeah, and one of your biggest storylines, obviously, they would always pan back to you on the phone with, um, I think it was Mitchell. Would you advise someone, like, if they were going on one of these shows, to not go on with a relationship? No, oh, I don't know. I get it. I mean, I mean, I don't know if, if, I mean, I could only speak for myself. Can I advise somebody to not go on? No. I, I think that I don't, I don't know. I, I can't even answer that. What was I? I mean, it made good TV, right? Yeah. I, it made great TV. Well, from like a living experience, I mean. Yeah. No, I don't. For me, would I advise? Probably not because I didn't do anything with any of my roommates. Like I had no relations. I feel like, like Bill Clinton. I had no relations with that woman, but I had no relations with, uh, with any of my roommates. Like none of the, men in the in the in the cast that I ever have any relations with them I mean or women I they were all my friends even though at one point I saw a clip the other day saying I hate them all I hate them all I hate all my roommates I hate them all so um let me see how much battery I have um so anyway so I was just um I, would I advise yeah if you want your garbage if you want to be true and you want your garbage to be 
exposed on television because the television loves garbage and dirty relationships is the best garbage people like to watch. They like to they like to live in your misery. Well, one of the biggest moments and people refer to this as like one of the most iconic moments in real world history since we're on the topic of relationships was when uh, you tried sneaking through the uh, the window. Window. Yes, the window. Um, the window was. Uh, the window was great. It wasn't premeditated. It was like I said before, it was something that. I came home from, I don't even know where I was or how long I was gone for. And they were all up in their, you know, jocks. Ah! I was like, okay, let me go in and see. Doors closed. How the hell am I going to get in? Climb through the fucking window. Did I fit? Ask the question. Did Flora fit through the freaking window? No, she did not. How close did she, you come? My tits got stuck in the oh. slat. You know, the old slat windows? Right. Yeah. So I got through and somewhere here I got stuck. And I'm, I think I, either I told Sarah to shove me or I didn't. So they were trying to push me through, but boobies wouldn't let me go. I was stuck. So I didn't see it was dark. How can I get through a window that's this big? I mean, seriously. So, yeah, that, that, that answers the folks questions. Then whatever happened on that faithful Miami night is forever up for interpretation. And I'll tell you, I don't even know what happened there. Yeah. I, you know, am I going to, at my age, speculate? No, because who knows? And, you know, someone barking doesn't mean there's a dog in the room, right? Yeah. But people are going to think there's a dog in the room. So what we heard and saw or didn't see back then could be a complete, and I don't believe that Mel uh, did anything or, or was was participating in anything that people are projecting, but it's great television for them to make a big deal out of nothing. Yeah. Have, did you keep up with uh, your roommates once the show wrapped throughout the years? Like, or did you guys kind of go through your separate ways from that point on? Separate ways. I, you know, I, I talked to Mel once in a while. Oh, um, really? Yeah, she's, she's great. She's awesome. She still looks uh, the same. I haven't seen her in forever. Um, but you know, I spoke to her not long ago, a month or two ago, you know, just, but I don't speak to anybody. Oh, Dan, I speak to Dan yeah. once in a while. Yeah. I speak to him once in a, you know, once in a while, sometimes we'll text each other, but I have like, I have a life, not that Dan doesn't, I think he's a nurse mm -hmm. and I know Mel, Mel is very well established. And from what I understand from Dan, Joe is doing very well. I don't know anything about Cynthia, nor do I know anything about my Sarah. When I say my Sarah, she was my roommate. Uh, we, we shared a room together. So I, I don't know. I'm, I'm hoping that, and I don't see any of them on any of the challenges. So I'm thinking that these people from my cast, they actually have lives. Well, if you didn't know, I mean, they have been revisiting some real world seasons the this past year. And I heard. I heard. Doing homecomings. I don't know if you've checked out any of them. Um, nope. Okay. Um, but people have been uh, kind of hoping that Miami gets a, gets a ring and gets a phone call to do one of those. If that were the case and your phone comes ringing, what, what's going to be uh, your response to that? If I'm not traveling the world which I, my new thing is I like to travel the world now, um, then I am definitely, and why not? I'd love to see everybody. I would love, love, love to see everybody and see what everybody's doing. Listen, I'm a businesswoman. I may connect and do business with somebody. I got to know what they're doing. I know Joe is doing investments. I'm doing investments. I mean, he's a smart dude. You know, I connect with people I'm a businesswoman and I want to do business. If you can help me and I can help you, let's do it. So why not? I do it. Has, has there been any feelers thrown your way in that regard or no? Mm, kind of. There have been. But you know what? I wipe my ass with all of them unless I see paper. I, I disregard it. He says, she said, they said, all said. I'm so busy with my life and my daughter that... I don't pay attention to unless I get that call and an email saying, hey, do 
do you, are you interested? This is what we're offering or this is what we're not offering. You want to do this for fun? Then I'll, then I'll say, oh yeah, I got it. But the blah, 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 blah is all bullshit for me. Well, I know you, you guys would be getting from what I hear a lot more than what you were getting back in the day. That's for sure. Again, to me, I, I thank God and um, I thank the universe and people around me that I am not in need of that a lot more than what we got when I was 20 and 30. Um, so I'm good with or without it. It, it, it. Extra pocket change? Okay, cool. Will I go and live off of that for the next two, three years? No. So um, I have bigger plans than, you know, the week or two weeks or three weeks, however long, you know, if they offer me pocket change, great. I appreciate it and I'll do it, pocket change or no pocket change. But um, I don't bank on anything that anybody says unless it's in writing now. Yeah. So, so what did you try to pursue or do immediately following your real world? Did you try to dip your toes into acting or any magazine stuff immediately? I don't remember. I don't remember. I was probably working uh, at a bar or I was bartending probably. I I don't remember. I I know I was uh, married uh, to Mitchell. That didn't work out so well. Oh, wow. You guys Um, actually got married. I didn't know that. Yeah, we ran to Vegas like assholes and and got married. (laughs) What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas then. (laughs) I'm like Britney Spears. Like, what was it, 12 hour of marriage? Yeah, there you go. Shit like that, you know. Um, I I don't remember. It 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 was one of those childish things. I did Playboy. I, um, you know, I, I, I just did what people my age do party, work, pay rent, da 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 da. Bullshit, bullshit, more bullshit. I'm a grown up now. <laughs> so, so you didn't, <laughs> so you didn't rub elbows with any like uh, well known people or nothing like that. No, I'm not cool like that. I, I don't know how to I, kiss I, ass. I, I you know, I don't know. Cool. Let me tell you, I don't know how to kiss ass. I don't know how, how to sm- sm- smoosh, smooch, smoosh, smoosh. You know, when you, you're trying to get into a, uh, into a circle, you know, schmooze, schmooze. <laughs> That's the word I'm trying to use. Like, I don't know that shit. That to me is, is you have to be very talented and you have to be that perfect person. I'm not, I'm a little bit rough around the edges and people, you know, they either have to know me or they don't want to know me. Mm-hmm. Like I can't just get into a circle. Did you get to meet like the other real worlders? Like we mentioned before, there was obviously a ten year reunion with uh, the seasons. Did you uh, meet any of those cast members? And if so, I like got, I got to meet Elka. I remember. Uh, I know Cyrus very well. Uh, I love Cyrus, of course. Beth, Dan. Um, I don't. No, that's it. I'm not really. I couldn't even name ten of them. Well, wow. Well, I'm, I'm sure they could I'm all name not- you though. You're pretty. You're a pretty identifiable, identifiable person when it comes to the real world people. I know you're pretty uh, removed from it, but people refer to you in a lot of cases as a well-known cast member. Well, I hope so. I, I hope I left, like, I don't care if I left a bad taste in their mouth. You know, Madonna always said, and I live by that, bad publicity is the best publicity. They will never forget the shit that you did. They always forget the good stuff, but they never forget the bad stuff. I bet you didn't really have to deal with much, like, backlash or negativity, though, right? Because, like, social media wasn't really a thing back uh, when you were coming off your show, if I'm correct. So... I bet it must have just been like you went and did your show. You could show up to a couple reunions sprinkled in here and there, and then you just go about your normal life. It's because, well, that's true. But for example, you know, like we keep going back to my friend, Beth, she gets, she's, I mean, she's been on several, I guess, uh, reunions and, and some, she gets it back. It's the people that, you know, my people, I think that my cast, have lives yeah where the other casts 
probably don't. And they got to keep their face in the media. I don't give two shits about keeping my face in the media. I know who I am. I don't need to tweet, you know, I'm taking a shit. I don't need to tweet that I'm going to the beach, you know, and I'm wearing a new bathing suit. I don't need any of this stuff. These people, they, they, uh, they don't have lives. They, their income and I'm sorry, guys, I know you. I, this is where I'm going to get all my shit right here, but I could give two shits. You know, I don't even have, I don't even know how to use the Twitter shit, right? So they, they, need, they need this stuff. Their paycheck is these challenges. Their paycheck is being on the real world and, and being doing this. My paycheck is my brain, not, not that I'm going to go in and, and swim who swims faster down the street. Or down down the pool laps, you know? So, you know, that's how I don't stay in the media. And the reason, uh, you know, they keep bringing Beth into this because these people don't have a life. So they need some more juice. And, and back in the days, there was juice, I am sure. And so they're bringing old shit into a new world. And Beth happens to be in those people's, you know, reach. Yeah. Well, I got to ask you, since this is like a huge urban legend that uh, a lot of the fans have wanted to know, everybody's like speculating all this time. Was there like a big like protest rally at the 10 year reunion for uh, more pay for the cast? Yes. Who was that you that started it? What? <laughs> what? The the know. rally? I don't know. Maybe. OK. It was. It was it, trust me, there's never one person. There's one person that could take the blame, but it's more people involved. Initiate, initiate and bring the idea to the table, just like a business. I brought an idea to the table. You take it or leave it. And some of the smart people around the table said, yes, you are correct. And we got a few good men, a few good women around the table and yes we did rally as we should we gave them millions they gave us five dollars how was that met on your end like as far as their reaction go did you feel like um were you met were you met with contention per personally from that what do you mean like were you given like a cold shoulder after that by who i don't like, know I whoever was uh I, I didn't, I don't think I give a shit. Yeah, I don't really care. Yeah, it's true. I know, I know who I am. You know, do I care if somebody's going to be upset with me? I don't think so. I don't care. You know, I think I deserved what I deserved. Am I going to go for it? As well as a few other people who are high profile senators and so forth right now. They were on my team, you know. It's always you always win when you have a few good men slash women on your team. Yeah. And we well, rallied. I believe we won. Oh, well, good. At least. Uh, I can't remember, least... I'm going to have to ask. And if somebody <laughs> of your viewers tells me if I want we won or not, I'd like to know myself because I don't remember. It was so long ago. Listen, it feels like the fans remember more things than the actual people involved in these situations. I was talking about this the other day <laughs> with. I was talking about this the other day with um, Eric from uh, Real World New York, the first season. We were talking about how much fans, when they uh, watch these shows, it's like they swear they're there with you guys, despite actually not. Right, because back then it was real. Mm -hmm. We can't fact that, you know, back then it was real. They were with us. They were in our house. They were in our lofts. They were in our bathrooms. They were climbing through the window with us. They were rooting for us. Now, everybody knows that it's not as reality as it really is, you know? They could tune away and then they'll come back and you're in a different makeup, but in the same scene. Back then, they were with us. They were, you know at the tables with us and now you know we pan back and forth back and forth the cameras the makeup the retakes everything is perfect um so they do remember more than we do we because they could rewatch it like like you said most of us don't watch our own episodes we don't know what we did yeah which is probably the better thing to do i feel like once you live something out already there's no point in really right. reliving it 
I don't watch these back when I'm done, really. But <laughs> What's the point? You did it. You enjoyed it. You're proud of what you did. You don't regret it. Move forward to the next chapter. Exactly. This is a great way of putting it. But um, I thank you for being so generous with your time today and uh, coming on here and doing this. You didn't have to do this, so I'm very appreciative. No, want- you were really? I wanted to do it. I appreciate it. I appreciate you reaching out to me. And I appreciate that you had an interest to even talk to me. I'm pretty boring, you know, but I, I didn't um, think so. <laughs> but thank you. Anytime, anytime, reach out. When if you ever get anybody else of my cast members on there, I'd love to see those oh. friends of mine. Back yeah, in the for days. sure. Absolutely. I don't even know if they have something nice or not nice to say about myself, me. So, you know, I'm always, you know, you see what you see is what you get. No bullshit straightforward yeah and, and you could tell beth too that when she uh wants to stop playing the cat and mouse game that she could hop on here too. <laughs> i think i'll tell you i spoke to her i said do you know this guy and she's like yeah but you know i'm gonna go on there and you know they're gonna start back you know saying bad things about me the beth babe who gives a shit these are just people that don't really matter there you go they're so, just fans at the end of the day. Yeah, at the end of the day, you're still you and we're still we and we st- I'm still me. But I appreciate you and your time and thank you so much. I love you and thank I love you. you guys. Thank you. Call me anytime. Anything I could help, I'm, I'm around. For sure. All right. Have a great rest of your day and weekend. Bye. You too. Bye-bye.